Hello comrades, with great difficulty comes great results. Today we're filming with some very challenging things happening, rain, malfunction of cameras, crashing of Teslas, pretty awful day, but I wanna pull through it and show you guys the video that I've been trying to show you. The iPhone 3G in 2019, is it possible? Can it be done? So I did a similar style video with the iPhone 2G where I, I used it for a day and it really shows you that it cannot be done with a phone that old anyways. Let's try it with an iPhone 3G as an unofficial 10 year challenge for Apple. Let's see if this phone has what it takes to be used in modern day 2019. I mean, this thing should technically be a little bit better. It has 3G, the first iPhone with GPS capability. So I should be able to use navigation. YouTube might work on this thing. Like it might be an easier phone to live with. And that's what this video is about. To what extent can I use it with? You know, it is torture, but it should be easier to use than the 2G. I've literally had people ask me to make this into a series, so. This is installment two with the legendary iPhone 3G. One of the best iPhone designs of all time. If you guys have a chance ever just to play with this thing, hold it, know what these things were about back in the day. This was amazing, man. I have so much experience with this design. I used to literally have complete strangers come home to my parents' house and I'd unlock and jailbreak phones for like $30. What an experience, man. Like different era, would not ever do anything like that today, but it got me to where I was. It was a little bit of a hustler. So um, I definitely have a lot of experience with this phone. All the boot looping, the baseband 6.15.0.0. I literally still remember those numbers because of this phone. I think that's what got me pretty big is all the fixes online and everything and a good time. So let's see if we can live with this thing, what the quality is like, we'll compare it to the latest and greatest, and uh, let's get a little perspective here. So this is the 3G, and this is the 10s Max. What a difference, right? I mean, huge difference in display. It's a 3.5 inch where everything is easily reachable. Here, you know, I have to travel up towards the top of the phone just to pull down the control center. Different time, comfort-wise, yeah. So it was a little chunky, but the tapered edges made it feel so much more revolutionary. It's a plastic back, you know, Apple wouldn't do something like this ever again. And it was prone to cracking. The cases themselves would just like shatter down here up on top. I have some cracks here. There was a lot of design flaws with this, but I love this phone so much all the same. And uh, guys, yeah, you read the title right. I did crash my Tesla unrelated to this. And there's a lesson to be learned there. The only reason I'm sharing this with you, I'm super embarrassed about it. My baby, my brand new baby, and I wrecked her already. Like, honestly, what is, that's so dumb. But I'll explain what happened. Just kind of want to wrap it all into one video. So step one for the iPhone, let's get service on it. And to get service on it, you have to jailbreak and unlock it. This thing's jailbroken, but not unlocked. So let's go take care of that. We'll get some service going and I'll start using this thing. Now the 3G itself was mostly like recycled iPhone 2G stuff. Same processor, uh, down clocked from 620 or 600 megahertz around to 412. So same specs, 128 megabytes of RAM. And the cool thing is it went up to 16 gigabytes so you could load an insane amount of music and movies on this at the time, but really not much you could do to take advantage of this thing, especially back in the day. I guess the only cool thing was all the apps with the popcorn and the beer, like tricking people into thinking it was in the phone. Good times, good times for sure. All right, so little disclaimer for you guys. Um, in no way do I blame Tesla for this. I'll explain what happened, but it just sucks, you know? That shiny new toy, that shiny new phone you get and you just crack it right there. Um, it is a car after all, it's a lesson to be learned, but it sucks. So come in. Anyways, it's got all the crap on it because <laughs> basically what happened was I put this thing into autopilot and I, I was rummaging in my bag. I was trying to get something from my bag. I can promise you I was not on my phone. So that's the one thing I can at least feel somewhat good about is I wasn't being totally reckless, but I had an autopilot. I got so used to the autopilot being, you know, doing pretty good on the freeway and it was raining really heavily. So I set it and I start rummaging in that seat over there, you know, trying to find something. Next thing you know, I look up, the car is like shaking and I'm in the, I'm off the road. I'm like flying in the grass and the car, I don't know if the car was slowing down on its own or not. I, I don't really remember what freaking, what notices it gave me at the moment because the music was so loud. I look up, it's hectic. I just, first reaction is just to stabilize the car. And there was a rock there, as you can see, you know, I should have just let myself go into the, into the side, get stuck rather than hit that rock. But I swerved, hit the rock, panicked, and this is what happened, like destroyed my bumper, hit the wheel, and I think the suspension might be screwed. There's definitely something bent here. Um, all the plastic's broken. Man, 
I'm so disappointed in myself. So in no way do I blame Tesla. I feel like the autopilot was engaged, but at the same time, I might have set it and it didn't fully engage or it disengaged because of the weather and I didn't look up in time. I was literally looking down for like 20 seconds, I'd say. So very careless of me. Let that be a lesson. Do not fully trust this stuff yet. You have to be there fully aware. You know, I drove it home, no problem. It's not, it could have been worse, but knowing it's a Tesla, this is at least like five, five to eight grand worth of damage right here. So very careless of me. Learn something from this, guys. I'm just, it hurts. It honestly hurts so much just being an idiot and seeing your own actions uh, happen. And so in the dash cam footage, you can see it wasn't, it wasn't fast. At first I thought I hydroplaned or something, but it wasn't that. It was just the autopilot disengaged. I didn't notice it. Here we are. <laughs> But yeah, whatever. It can be fixed, it's a car, no problem. With time, we'll, we'll learn something from this and I hope you guys do too. That's the only reason I'm sharing this. Okay, so here's the dash cam footage. This is where I enable autopilots, or at least I think I do. And I don't know what went wrong here. Did I not enable it? Um, and I started looking in my bag because I'm going off right away. But the weather was really bad. Like there's puddles on the road and yeah, there's that rock. I try and outmaneuver it. My car skids a little. As you can see, corrected and boom. <laughs> Stupid all around, whatever. I'm not even gonna try and get to the bottom of this, but just be careful when on autopilot. <laughs> My car literally launches up. I hit it, it goes pop. Ah. All right, so which one of you guys remember the good old red snow days? Days where your phone might not be working and break itself and you'd be panicking, go on YouTube, figure out how to fix it and my videos would be there. Well, at least some of them. And I'm surprised this stuff still works. These apps, man, they were rock solid. What a trip down memory lane. I'm watching my video from 2012 on how to do this. So yeah, I'm looking out for myself in the future. Anyways, so now we are installing the iPad baseband that troubled so many. The people that remember, you just know how terrible it was when you suddenly your phone wasn't working this expensive thing you decided to take a chance on jailbreaking next thing you know it's not working so i guess that's why i made a killing on craigslist <laughs> but uh, hopefully i don't have any issues here it goes through look at that good old days of the verbose boot basically what every iphone does behind the covers every time it turns on but you just can't see it they hide it with the apple logo it's kind of cool, it gives it that hacker vibe. We're changing the baseband to that of the iPad so we can unlock it and use it with T-Mobile because you couldn't use these phones on T-Mobile back in the day and everyone still would do it, you know, taking the risk of doing this stuff. Once this appears on your screen, you can breathe a sigh of relief because you're in the clear basically. All right, so check this out. The Ultra Snow unlock worked. I have a T-Mobile SIM in here. It's not activated, so we do need to get one with service, but at least I know it works, no problems. So much easier than the iPhone 2G. That was a struggle. So I guess that's uh, moving up in this world slowly. Check this out. I'm gonna play something real quick. Go into the horizontal view and boom, look at that cover flow. It's a bit choppy, but yo, it does work. And that's awesome, seriously. We're so spoiled today. Oh, it's peaking. Such a tragedy. We gotta take the R8 out because I literally sold my daily driver. This was it. I'll keep you guys updated, but pretty sure it's gonna be like five to 10 grand worth of damage. It's bad. It doesn't look bad, but it's bad. Learn from my mistakes, from my idiocy. <laughs> All right, well, Whatever reason I have to take the R8 out is a good one. So let's make the best of it. I actually just ordered the facelift bumpers and you guys, you guys absolutely loved the new ones when I asked you on Instagram, like everyone was for, I think it was 90% wanted them. The back ones, they did not. So that's kind of a, I don't know. I can't just do the front and then not the back. I have to do both, but I love it. I love it. It looks like a Lamborghini, so sharp. It, it makes this thing look way wider and lower. So I'm very excited about that. A match made in heaven, white car, white phone. This is, this is why I kind of hate Audi is everything has to be so complicated. Connect Bluetooth player. Yes, I am connected. So this thing is hooked up. No way. Dude, this thing actually streams Bluetooth, wow. See, that's iOS 4, I forgot, that's what a feature. I literally fully did not expect this to work. I am so overjoyed, we get some music in the car. Cool, man, that's a step up already. Like, I can live with this phone now. It's much easier once the music is going. Honestly, that'd be kind of funny if 
like you legit hop out of a, a Audi R8, pull out your iPhone 3G and start like talking to your mom or something on the phone. <laughs> what would people think, obviously? All right guys, so good news is we were able to activate it no problem. I'm able to make calls. It's connected to the car and playing music. Like this is so much more livable with than the iPhone 2G was. So now I'm going to put the directions into my parents' house. Let's go explore the camera on this bad guy. I love this cat. He drools a lot, but my psych order isn't working for some reason. I'm not able to get video. Anyways, we can't get the video recorder to work, which is honestly disappointing because I wanted to see, but I imagine it would be a lot like the 2G quality, it's the same sensor and everything, I think. Fortunately, we weren't able to get the camera working, and uh, yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but there's my little brother. How old are you right now? 13? Yeah. Literally 10 years younger. This is the true 10 year challenge right here. Me, a copy of me 10 years ago. So what do you think of the iPhone 3G? Super like slow and nah, old. It is. It's lagging literally while moving the pages. That's funny. And camera takes forever. Camera takes forever. That is one of those things you don't really appreciate how fast they open. On the old ones, you'd literally wait like three seconds and then the moment's gone to open. I guess that concludes it guys. The iPhone 3G, you could use it in your day-to-day -day life and I was able to navigate with it. To an extent, I was able to send messages, calls more comfortably than the 2G. I was even able to stream music in my brand new car. Well, not even anymore, but the point is it's much more usable than the 2G. And I'm excited to try this out with the 3GS another time, but not bad much more capable than I thought it would be. You can use headphones with it, uh, Bluetooth streaming headphones, so you could live with this thing in 2019 if you wanted to. The question is, will you? Right, I also wanted to show you guys our little pet project. I just had this idea. If Apple were to release an iPhone 3G today, like how would they do it? And also mimicking some of the features, so I wanted to explain this to you. We had uh, the Bro King model this up, and this is the modern version of the 3G in my vision of it. So similar style buttons and everything. It's got a headphone jack. It's super thin. Uh, it also does have the iPhone uh, 10, you know, the setup. So I didn't put cameras on it. The notch is just there for the heck of it. Obviously didn't have a front facing camera. Uh, we gave it a very similar style earpiece up here. So very similar cutout here. The attention to detail is really good. For the lens, just a single one, but a modern one. No flash or microphone. Also, what else? We got the entire chrome border, the real deal here. Very similar, so. Oh, and also the 30 pin down here. Phillips screws when Apple used to somewhat let you repair your phones. Beautiful, beautiful. So props to the Bro King for this one. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. My version of the 3G in 2019. Expectation versus reality right here. So all around, really cool.